five, you guys four, three, two, one. Welcome to. <laughs> You messed it up. I thought we were doing the clap. No, no. why? We don't. Uh, no, I just I count it in and then we go. You don't have to clap. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome to another fighter pants fighter. <laughs> God damn it! Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another fighter stance podcast. I am joined today by Nick Booty Judge. Nick Booty Judge, not my real name, but it's okay. Uh, we also have Zach as always. How's it going? And we got special guest today, Travis Moore here. What's up? The runner and operator of Legends Jiu Jitsu and Temple. Me and Travis have been friends for what, like, a long time. Man. Yeah, like fifteen years, probably. Yeah, long so you, time. Maybe longer than that because you're third degree now, right? We, yeah, I remember when we both had hair. So that's, uh, <laughs> on our heads, on, yeah. hair on our heads. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got sweet facial hair now. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I think I was thirty. Whenever my hair started running away from my eyebrows, like yeah. they were on fire. <laughs> yeah. So like back then, I think uh, we were probably like brown belts. Yeah. I, I even remember for you when uh, a lot of people don't remember this, you're at 205, maybe less, yeah. maybe 190, <laughs> something like that. You when were, was that? Well, when was that? Uh, that? I mean, man, it was <laughs> like, like when I was like 30. Yeah. yeah. He, he, Pat was Pat was always a beast wrestler, super strong, but. He was not the monster of a, of a man he is now. He is so, much thinner, much so thinner. Travis, I don't think you know how this podcast goes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what happens is uh, you're being very nice. I'm not used to that, so I'm going to yeah. blush. Uh, 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 Normally, yeah, people yeah. just they just shit on me for an hour. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So let me tell a story about Travis. Um, <laughs> I, Travis has these long arms and this sick guard, and I was trying to body lock pass him before anybody knew what body lock passing was. And uh, he put me in a Darce choke from closed guard, and I remember, like, there's no way he's going to be able to do this. So I kind of flex my lats. Do the cobra. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I felt everything go. Ooh. Oh, shoot. And I was like, oh, I'm going to tap to this. <laughs> and you were like, hey, was that tight? I go, uh, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No and chance to tap on Yeah, that was at the, your, your old academy. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. The, the, our old academy, like, pretty much sucked, man. Bro. <laughs> but in terms of a building... Um, we had the lowest of low building. We still had great training. Uh, at the time, you were kind of, before, this was right before you moved to Austin, I think, yeah. uh, maybe in there. So uh, Pat was still in the area. He'd come by all the time. And some of the guys here today, we have a f mutual friend named Jeff Rowe, uh that we've trained with. He trained longer than both of us, uh, yeah. actually. But he was here. and um, man, Jeff was awesome. Yeah, old, yeah, our old academy, though, hole in the wall, sucked uh, in terms of a building, but great people there training, man. Do you guys have the coolest mural though? Oh, the on the mural back was wall? Dope. Yeah. Everyone tells me that's how, so, um, our, we had business partners, our old gym, uh, it was a different name from what it is now. We ended up buying out our partners. Uh, but one of the cool things that we kept the theme of is the, we have the Spartan helmet yeah. uh, oh, on nice. all of our yeah. stuff, but he had hand painted, uh, which is nuts. If you had seen the old mural, I'll, I'll try to pull it up before we leave. But, uh, he had hand painted. He went in there. He stayed there three nights in a row. And oh he, my God. he took payment in pizza. He was like, just oh buy me God. pizza. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, he hand painted this. He had no pre drawing. It looks just like the scene from 300. Yeah. Oh so my God. the guys are like kicking each other. It's like super crazy. It was the coolest. Look. People ask me, when is that coming back? Now we have a nicer building, like the, <laughs> just the jujitsu match you guys have out there. And I'm like, I don't know where we're going to paint this building. But yeah. that, that building, man, that was probably what i missed the most for yeah sure. it was dope I, it would be cool if you guys like if because the walls were brick yeah so you can't like get tear it down yeah right yeah. But if, it was, if it was like sheetrock can't pull we, a banksy on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Went down there and cut the whole yeah, wall that, that was the, hard losing that one for yeah. sure man yeah so when did you start doing jujitsu man um well in terms of my life i was i was 20 when i started so this was uh man 2007 2008 somewhere yeah. somewhere around there and um, I, I was not interested in actually doing jujitsu. I'd really liked UFC, like most guys yeah. have. And um, I know Pat has the MMA background as well. That's actually how I met you first. You were yeah. fighting, but uh, which I did not want to do. Right, right. I, well, I was the exact opposite of most people. Yeah. I, I just wanted to do jujitsu. And yeah. John Moore was like, "Hey, do you want to fight?" I, yeah. was like, I was like, "No." He's like, "He's like, there's a fight in a month. You want to fight?" I was like, "No, I don't want to fight." And the whole class, because you know John Moore, yeah. The whole class, he was like, "Do you want to fight? Do you want to yep. fight? Do you yep. want to fight? Do you want to fight?" I was like, "Fine, I'll do it." Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I, all the time, man. And so my my passion had started like watching UFC. I was like, "Let me go check out this gym." And so in in our area, there was a gym in Cove. It's it wasn't open and it closed pretty quick. It was called Fighters Forge. Yeah. Um, that was my first experience and. 
I didn't know this going in. I, I had met some of the, the fighters there. Um, a couple of the guys still train in the, the area I live, but um, man, I, the first two weeks were great. And then t- they had told me, they said, hey, coach is coming back this week. So I was like, wait, none of you guys are the coach? And they were like, no, coach is coming back next week. So coach comes and they just throw me in there to spar with these pros. I got the shit behind oh me. I was, like, I was like, dude. Um, so I, after coach came back, I was like, maybe it's just like this initiation process. Day two was like that. Yeah, like just shit beat out of me sparring. I leg kicks, which I had like never really felt before. Oh my God. And I was like, dude. I liked the grappling. I did not like this like m- constant banging on me. And then he was like, well, we got jump rope after this. I remember so funny. This is a funny memory for me looking back, but in the moment it was serious. So I was like, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I take my shirt off and I lay on the floor. I'm just so gassed from doing this. And I was like, dude, am I having a heart attack? Here I am like 19 years old. I'm like, am I, am I dying? Like what's happening? So I slowly find my way. I make some excuse. I was like, I gotta be home, man. I'm leaving, taking off and then I, it's like, oh, is this for me? Is this for me? And then, um, thankfully, uh, going to going to college out there, um, just like a two year college, uh, it's Central Texas College. Uh, they had told me like, hey, the instructor I had was like, hey, there's another gym over here, um, and it, it's one of our mutual gyms. Me and Pat have both been through. We're friends with a lot of guys there. It's Twin Wolves uh, MMA. Um, so we had went out there, and uh, a lot of the instructors I had started with there had actually started at the grapplers layer, yeah. and that's where they had went. So it's a it's a small world how everyone fits together, but. Um, anyways, he had introduced me to Muay Thai and I was like, this is okay, but what's this stuff they're doing in the gi? Like, what, mm. what are they doing over here at, at the old place? They didn't do, ha- even have the gi. It wasn't an option. Put this gi on and just fell in love. Kind of like what you were saying with jujitsu. But when we had started doing jujitsu, there was no real route to any success. It's no. like, you, you could be a, you could be a good grappler. And it was like, oh, that guy's a good grappler. <laughs> but that's kind of the extent of it, yeah. um, you know what I mean? So I, I was still at that point convinced I, w- I wanted to fight and do all this. So um, after after a little bit of time there, uh, I discovered again, um, this, I know Pat really well through this, one of our other mutual uh, coaches, and now I, I think he's lost distance with everybody, but Jared, uh, I'd found them, and I think that's the first time we linked up. But it was between there and the late grapplers layer had been. Yeah, because it seemed like we were going like back and forth. Yeah, like you yep. were training at school, I was at yep. a different school, and you would really. I was just running from you. Yeah, no, no, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like, so Jared, what was Jared's school? Because he trained at the uh, Matt Larson's combat. I, tra- I trained there, and then he had a, a American Fight Company. Yeah. Was, uh, American Fight Company was his first one. Was that the it- one that was in the gym? Like the the fitness gym. That, so when he was downtown, then he moved to the gym. Oh, okay, and that, okay. That was part of part of uh, I and you'll I, you'll agree with me on this one. Part of I think the struggles were we were in this building downtown that sucked. He wanted to upgrade, but in transition, he had no building to upgrade. So we ended up in CrossFit gym, <laughs> yep. this and that. I you remember. got your black belt around there, yeah, too. Yeah, I did. I did. Because I, I I think I got back from a deployment, and yep. I was like, I'm not going to train at the grappler's lair. Yeah. I wasn't for sure about Twin Wolves at the time. Yeah. And then I was like, I'll just go go to Jared's. And you, me and you were, I was training for something. You were, you were. I, I really forgot what that was yeah, at the time, but I, you were. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but me and you were going at it, though. Uh, yeah. And then, like, I think you submitted me in front of Jared. <laughs> And then, like a day later, you got your black belt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. that uh, man. Well, that's that's how Jared. You know how Jared yeah. was, though, man. It was yeah. like uh, a prisoner of the moment. Something yeah, to do something he, good, and he was like, "Oh man!" Like uh, he was very very impulsive, but also not taking anything away. Like you deserved it. Like you, like at that time, I I I don't think because again, there was like in that around Fort Hood, there's like an ebb and flow of like the jiu-jitsu scene right there like is, yeah sometimes they're like before me and you even started yeah. it was like uh shannon rich yep i remember like, was mm-hmm. oh he had a school and john trained there mm-hmm. and then one night they showed up and everything was locked up and shannon just left town Failed. yep and <laughs> so yeah and yeah just yeah it's old school though bro this is like <laughs> or before 2000 yeah Sh- shannon yeah. rich too his mma records like 40 and 80. Yeah. Some insane. Wow. Over 100 got a, professional geez, fights. Oh my yeah. God. got a record, man. super sketchy record. Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's hundreds of fights. Yeah. Man. All the CTE. Um, <laughs> How do you get that many fights? Like you just Well, again, though, back just, in the day, there's no box. They just, just show no, up. No, shit, no yeah. commission. And he, I think he would just show up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh I, hey, I'm ready, ready I'll to I'll fight go, someone. Man. Yeah. In the Hooters like, parking got, lot. for me. So, but like he left and then John started training people in his garage. And then, like, it was, like, the grappler's lair was, like, really the only business in town. Yeah. And then I think Fighters Forge opened. Fighters Forge opened. 
and then Matt Lar or no, it was Fires for Jared. It was Twin Wolves because it was Jared and uh, Gray. Gray, Gray, yeah, yeah, and then they split apart. Yep. It's funny because most of these dudes are still in the area. Oh, they're still, the still in the area. So uh, it, it's, I have to, man, I'm glad we're doing this now. So I can expl- <laughs> explain this. Uh, so like you said, I didn't even know. I learned just now the Shannon Rich part, but yeah. I knew who he was. Yeah. Um, so then they had the layer. Yeah. And then Jared was a kid's coach at the layer. And then Gray, I think, just was a student. No, Gray. so Gray taught kickboxing. Gray taught People kickboxing. People don't know this about Gray. Yeah. So again, like I used to... F- I was an MMA fighter, yeah. so Gray would run the kickboxing class, and God knows I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> because my stand up was horrible, right? Yeah. Even as a wrestler? Yeah, even if you wrestle since you were four <laughs> fucking. <laughs> 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 so, Gray, le- Gray used to be like, I would be like, I, he, Gray would be like, let's kickbox. I'd be like, let's fight MMA. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, I'm not going to the ground. That's stupid. So, he's a black belt in jujitsu <laughs> now. Yes, yes. But, like, like 18 years ago, he was like, jujitsu's stupid. Yeah. He hated it. And now he's a, he's a black belt teacher. He's about, he's, and he has a similar build. At, like, he was started, I think he was already a little older uh, yeah, when yeah, he was yeah. starting. But he's a big, tall, he's thinner, thinner than me, about the same height. Uh, so, wrestling for him would. I mean, man, that'd be rough. But his kickboxing, like Anderson Silva type build, yeah. uh, he had some sick kickboxing. Great yeah. did, but they were all there. They split, and then they opened Twin Wolves with Jared being a coach, Gray being a coach, yep. and then Jared splits. Gray, the kickboxing guy, now becomes the jujitsu coach for at the Twin school. Wolves. Yeah. yeah, and then they, it's kind of so everyone now. Yeah, and then I think Gray moved over to be the kickboxing coach when they got someone else they did. in. They did, and then like. Twin Wolves, which is where I trained at at Fort Hood. Twin yep. Wolves, I trained with Travis. Yep. They um they have like they've had a like different like black belts right. come in and they're a GF team school now. But like it's crazy seeing like everybody that we kind of came up with, mm-hmm. like at one time or another, we all trained together and, and now did. everybody teaches at a school. Like Phil Platt, yep. San Antonio, it Henzo is. Gracie, right. right? You have um you have legends. Yep. I coach here. Um Jared it's a sad story, but he's not really. He, he had opportunities, though. He yes. really did. He had yeah, yeah, every no. Opportunity all all, to, all to the do opportunities, great. right? Yeah, yeah you're one hundred percent. He's but he's not really in anymore, right? But TJ, another guy we came right. up with. Yep. He he runs a jujitsu school. Yeah. Uh, Sal. Sal. Sorry, sorry yep. Sal runs a jujitsu school. So like all the guys that like came up around the same time as us. Mm-hmm. Re- well, really, there's. It's if you think about it, it's me, you, and TJ. Uh, yeah, me and TJ stuck with it, and uh, I think, man, it's all three of us have kind of a different contrasting how we play jiu-jitsu how we think of it and yeah of course we, and yeah. tj fought in the ufc he did. TJ, <laughs> TJ fought in the ufc yeah. uh slightly different yeah too. i mean man he he was sick at, in his peak he was sick with submissions and yeah. i think his body got so battered so now we're jiu-jitsu guys i think yeah. that yeah. have fought but yeah are yeah, yeah. Jiu-jitsu more jiu-jitsu guys, so yeah. we're in, we're jiu-jitsu guys who fought mma yeah that's it that's tj it. was tj is an mma fighter who teaches jiu-jitsu that's now. it that's exactly tj it. who perfect tj Wahlberger. okay yeah he uh he fought in the ufc what like three or four times yeah he fought he fought in there several times he has a few submissions like he got a, like a sub of the night so, okay. something like that oh, and so. he also nice. broke the record for the most submissions a great guy but he just like i think i think there's something to be said about someone who starts fighting mma that rough sport so young yep. where like a certain amount of time your body like it, it'll like bounce back from injuries and stuff like that yep. but if you use all that up like your power meter <laughs> and he just got to the point where like he couldn't really bend his neck yeah. like he was real young real beat up um and so oh, scar tissue heads up. yeah and he, he yeah. was supposed to fight a do a fight in brazil and I think it just kind of all caught up to him. He's like, I can't, like, I'm done. And so it's funny for for that fight. I so I was over there. I had we had moved to Temple, and um, I had high hopes of getting one last, not one last. To me, I was like going over there to invest, like one final run in fighting, not yep. one last fight. So we'd been training, and I, you know this as well of anybody at the at the layer. The vibe was kind of like a lot of guys did not want to spar like that or train. It was hard training. Uh, rough. Yeah, rough. It was knockout drag out every day yeah so it ended up, i end up being one of those guys that would just show up like frequently and there weren't many others and so by default i had got a passport i got it stamped to go to brazil i was going to go corner him yeah. uh and then all this stuff was covered and paid for and we were ready to go and then he started having issues like the weight wasn't coming off like xyz and 
uh, he was just like, man, I got this rash. Like it, his body was literally attacking him to the point where he had got hives, like oh uh, up and down his <laughs> yeah. body, and it just started kind of shutting down from all that, man. And the, the, the body rejected the sport. He, yeah, I think he, so. Yeah, I also think though one of the the problems though is old school training, but also old school mindset. Agreed. Yeah. Right, like um, to like your like one of the things that's great about. Travis is Travis has always been one of those guys who will go find the best dudes in the area and train with them. I remember for the longest time you were going to 10th planet in Austin oh, yeah. and like your game, like I, like I, like I felt like when we rolled, it was a good roll. Yeah. And then you started going and training with Curtis and you kind of figured out the leg lock game, which is yep. my nightmare. <laughs> and I was like, uh, Travis is so scary now because he's going to touch my feet. Hashtag. That Don't was, touch my feet. No, that was. Uh, <laughs> I, re I remember that too, man. Even even when I, uh, you'll you'll remember this well. I'd I'd, I'd came back uh, from shoulder surgery. You were teaching on Fort Hood. Yeah. I'd come in there with Jimmy. Uh, yeah. If you remember there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was just a matter of, at that p peak in time, was like, as everyone will go through in jujitsu, no matter what, it was like. My, I wanted my loyalty to, to show, like show Jira, like, hey, I, yeah. I'm this loyal guy to you. But I'd still come to your classes because I even felt at the time learning i was learning more from you yeah but mm -hmm. you have your professor and it's it's just this thing with jujitsu everyone yeah, knows what yeah. i'm talking about but i always felt that so i always want to go there and then um here like a lot of the guys new to austin don't really know this but mm -hmm. it was kind of like all these smaller gyms and then 10th planet austin open and it was like premier facility guys coming in and whatever and curtis uh he, he's a great instructor man yep. uh he's a lot older than he looks he's an older guy uh, a phenomenal instructor and he helped me out so much learning the leg attacks uh, and I got to work stuff there because they were still processing most days of bringing new students in yep. uh, so it was like man it was not target practice but I got <laughs> to work stuff where I was working and they were defending and he coached me through he even came out he flew to California the first time I did EBI cornered me there and I did that was a huge change in my game was like man lear learning that system of leg attacks and then evolving from there and like like you said man that's I think as, as a black belt, we owe it to ourselves. I just told my wife this. I was like, man, when I think of cross training, the, today was perfect. We had all different kinds of guys, different styles to work. I, I love it, man. You know, it, it, And that's one of those things, too, where I go back to is like, again, I like when we would roll, I, I felt OK. Mm. And then there was a time I, I saw that where you started training with Curtis and we would roll. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like defend, defend, bail, yeah. bail, <laughs> run away, run away. We're almost out of time. All right, good job, Travis. Thanks for the <laughs> robot. And I saw that that like the evolution in your yeah. game. And then um, I've seen you bounce around. Like I, I know you went to B team for I a did. little while and um, New Wave a couple times. I saw that picture with uh, I think it was when Marigali was getting ready for something. It was yep. you, Marigali, uh, Jamie Canuto. Oh yeah, yeah, and a couple of those, like I saw you guys in the geese, and I was like, that looks. <laughs> like a fucking nightmare. Oh, dude, dude. So, I uh, B team was for, was easier for me to get to first because I have known Craig from doing some events. So Craig's super cool. Uh, I I enjoyed the training and the vibe there. But this opportunity came up. So, so some of my friends, some of the guys we know, yeah. go to Henzo's in Austin. It's yeah. just a, a better fit. And so they're like, come do one of John's classes. Come do one of John's classes at Henzo Austin. It was like a great community of guys yep. too. And uh, Donaher compared to B teams, Donaher is a, in my opinion, more focused on technique. Uh, whereas B teams, like you're getting a lot of great drilling. There's a lot of great scrapping. Taught, you're scrapping though, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. John is more technique focused. The day I went to um, Henzo's in Austin, Marigali's first day, and he actually rolled at Henzo Austin. He wasn't at Roca that day, yeah. so we went. We made this like bond there. Big Dan was there, all this stuff, and uh, Big Dan had actually told me, "It's like, oh man, you're really strong. Uh, you should come out, come out to Roca." I didn't take him up on it. Didn't take him up on it, and then Marigali had been like, well, "I'm doing this gi camp. I need some black belts to come out." Uh, we got in touch with one another. He said, "Come out." So, like you said, the first day I showed up, I was like, "Oh, this was already rough." So the first day was Gordon, uh, Marigali. Uh, Tonin was there the first day, so it was just no nowhere you looked was there like oh man yeah, yeah. this is gonna be like a good time for me. It's, it's like, yeah, there's no rest rounds. No, there's no rest yeah. rounds. And, and you can't be like oh I gotta I gotta sit this one out, Gordon Ryan. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, well, and then and then so you're like all right, like a week goes by, and then the next week that's when Jaime come, came out, yeah. uh, and some of the some of these other guys that like man, I was like all these guys are freaking showing up. So now it's like already rough, but then now it was like dude, these guys are all like man, but. Yeah. It, 
just tough grapplers, man. Hey, John, I, I, I Dan, John Dan here. I got to drive home after this. Is there any way I can get like a break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's not. I have to go with Gordon now. <laughs> yeah. And then Gary, I, like, I, I, my back's hurt. <laughs> the doctor said I need a backyotomy. Like, I can't, yeah, can't and, do this. And, and, I, as they keep, like, people have invited me to go out there and Yeah, train, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, like, next week I'll probably be able to go out there. And get some rounds in, and then they're like, "Hey, do you want to go tomorrow?" I'm like, "I'm not like, I gotta uh, some emails that I gotta send." Like, I don't work. You know, it's, it's funny. It's funny you say that, man, because G- Gordon's not great because he's big, but he is big. But why I hate rolling him the most? Other good guys will submit you. You reset. Yeah, he'll smother you for, and he takes joy like for eight, <laughs> yeah. for eight minutes. And you're oh, like, like Tim Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, bro, like this is awful. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I can't do anything. I'm getting smothered. Yeah, uh, you you're want, laughing. Yeah, yeah. It's like you don't want to be the quitter in the room, so yeah. you're just enduring this. And it's like, yeah. dude, this we is get it. Awful. You're better. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I, I, I wonder how much of that, like the not not the. Not the intestinal fortitude to be like, I'm going to keep going because I want to get better. It's like, I don't want to be a bitch. That's it. That's it. For, me, for me, that was it. For me, that was it. I was like, dude, like, I want to tap. Like, I, I want to get out of here, but I'm, I'm not going to be the first guy that's given up yeah. under, underneath yeah. them. So yeah. I was like, I'll just keep trying. And, uh, that's just when you go, you re- like, when you roll with someone that's not like that level. Yeah. And there's like, you find like, a, maybe there's like a brown belt or a purple belt or something. You grab that guy and you fucking put it on him. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, you should go with Gordon next. So he's yeah. the first one to quit. So <laughs> only on, only on uh, no gi days. So yeah. If it's yeah. gi, you can't do that because. Because you're like a black belt and you're like shit yeah <laughs> it just looks worse so, yeah I, I remember on one of the days it was like that that we kind of did the situational rolling first and then i ended up just getting mauled by gordon it was i don't john does this like mind fuckery where he doesn't put time on the clock away so he's like we're gonna go and you don't know it could be 10 minutes could be three minutes it could be infinite time for all you yeah. know and you're getting smothered and then he's like all right uh this was marigali's get this is right before the world's uh he was going out there and then he said all right, Travis, today you're doing a 10 minute round with Nicholas, IBJJF rules. <laughs> I was like, bro. And so. Like Masters 2, bitch. Yeah. Like, like, five minute rounds, yeah. John. Yeah, I was like, bro. So I gave him all I had for 10 minutes, and I was like, that was probably the roughest time. I, one time he rolled through, he did this knee bar. I still don't know how he did it. And I was like, oh my God, man, like, this is rough. And then at the end, I thought he was getting tired. So for me, I, I uh, me, no, just to give you an idea how tough he is off of his back, I was like, I'm gonna try to wrestle. So I pick up a single leg, freaking throws me. But I saw he did do, he did do the same throw he did on me at Worlds. So I was like, maybe I helped him out. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, five percent of that throw yeah. was Travis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. This is yeah, man. So that was that was really cool, and I, I loved I, the lessons I learned from that. Though was like. One, of course, there's like level. We already all know there's levels to the game, yeah. but two, there were a lot of little things I picked up, man. Like so, sometimes people, even they come to my academy. I'm sure there's people here today. Maybe you guys face this. They want to go drill this cool stuff. Be it they saw a clip on Instagram, they watched an instructional and stuff. When I trained with John, like he he shows stuff on his instructional that is advanced. But one day I specifically remember this because it happened all day. We did triangles, just basic triangles, 30 minutes though, and he was like. Do this adjustment. Do that. It wasn't some crazy like, oh, we're gonna do a backflip into all this. It was <laughs> these guys are so efficient at basic techniques, right? So if he if John's building a game plan for Pat, he'd be like, we're gonna do this low single till everyone in the room is exhausted, and we're gonna talk about options from the low single. He's not gonna be like, we're gonna do this cartwheel backflip, Imanari yeah. roll, yeah, you know. So it's it was so cool seeing that like these high level guys aren't doing this crazy stuff. It's they're sticking to these few movements that work so well. Yeah, you know? really it, something it, about that. Drysdale was talking about that. Like the more efficient you are, the more deadly it will yeah, be. Right. Like right. the more complicated you get, the more room for error there is. Yeah. I can't remember exactly the wording, but that's basically what he was saying is the more you add to it, the more yeah. fluff you add to it, the more places there are to go wrong. I agree. hundred yeah. percent. Well, it's with this guy though, right? Like, yeah. Cause he, the, we didn't wear a Gita. He's a black belt though. And I, <laughs> so I noticed today that like, or not today, but every time I roll with him, every little thing that Zach does is one of those like, I'm, I hate that I'm saying something nice to you because you always shit on me. But everything he does, it, not, it, like his jujitsu isn't fancy. Yeah. He's not going to do anything weird. It's just basic, but he's been doing it so long and just getting smashed as like a smaller dude yeah. that it's everything he does. You're just like, stop it. Yeah, <laughs> that would, you, dude. You know what's messed up about doing nogi? I, coming in, I knew your rank, and I knew the the black belts rank that were in the front. You weren't standing in the front. I came in late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was so, working them off. So when you asked me to roll, I see this little guy, and I'm like, 
okay, my, my thought, because I think I, I had rolled maca right before you, and I was like, of course, it's like, I'm not going Did to you know? <laughs> Hold on, though. Did you know who maca was? I knew who maca was. Okay, so, cool. so, so I, I, was, I, was, I was still flowing, but I knew she was dangerous, so I was, cool. I was trying to avoid her game without going nuts. Uh, then we roll, and I'm like, oh, this little guy, I'll go, I'll go nice on him. And then you're, like, moving around like a bat out of hell. I'm like, He's like a spider hell? monkey. So, yeah. so, so, in my mind, towards the end of the roll, I was like, I'm going to have to start putting on this guy. <laughs> Then, yeah, I noticed that. Then, that uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, I'm going to have to start putting on this guy. And then in my mind, I literal afterthought was like, I really hope I find out he wasn't some white belt. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like, uh, no. He's, he's an assassin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, though. I thought about saying something, but I was like, it seems kind of douchey. would be like, hey, I love black belt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, and oh, that's, no. so I always feel bad about that. When you show up to a school and it's no gi, there's no way to know. There's no way to know, right? right. And yeah. you walk on the mat and you just, like, I 10th Planet Austin, yeah. great example. Yeah. So this was like, uh, I was getting ready for no gi pans yeah which i won yeah. um <laughs> and uh and i was like doing rounds yeah and there was this younger kid athletic and he was like you want to roll and he came be like asked me like it was one of those like he didn't say it but he was like do you want to roll old man and i was like <laughs> i'm gonna murder this bitch yeah and i like wrestled like we started he's like let's start standing i go uh are you sure like i got i kind of got a bad knee but we can do it yeah and, and he's I, he was four. Yeah, and I already did, <laughs> did you it. Tell him it that? doesn't count. I already did it. <laughs> did you tell and him that I, I did. And <laughs> I fucking put it on this kid. Like I took him down. I got his back and I picked him up and like slammed him. Like like might have been almost illegal. And I just wrecked this kid. And Curtis was standing right there with this smirk on his face. And the dude, we got done rolling, and he was like livid. And yeah. he was like, I can't believe that I just got wrecked like that. Like blah blah blah. And Curtis goes. The dude's a black belt. And he's been in the area forever. Like Patrick is an assassin, <laughs> Peace, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, like, ten minutes later, Nikki Rod walks in. <laughs> what Levels. belt was that kid that you yeah. went against? I have no idea. I didn't ask. He's like some like white belt. belt. Yeah, yeah. No, no. He, but he was like fucking people up. <laughs> oh, okay. just, yeah. But Nick. Anyways, Nikki Rod walks in with his brother and Isaac Michelle. Yeah. And a couple yeah. other people, and I was like. Pat went home. I'm not. <laughs> hey, I, I, no, no. I was about not to leave, time. and then I stopped, and I turned around. I was like, I got to get a r round with Nikki Rod. I'm not yeah. rolling with Isaac Michelle. Fuck that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I, I like I, I rolled with Nikki Rod. Everyone now knows that I'm a black belt. Yeah. And Nikki Rod just puts it on oh, me. Oh, dude. Yeah. And I was like, I'm I'm a brown belt, guys. I'm not. A, I'm not that good. I'm old. There's nothing. I'm too old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too so, old for this. Uh, the, the last EBI I did, I had win. I didn't get to make it to that one as much as, as I wanted. To, I didn't get to train like I wanted to yeah. for that one. But it, it's that's life. But one of the times I had went to B team in to do that, they were like, "Hey, Nikki Rod's also doing it. You guys could do EBI rounds, all right?" <laughs> so imagine they put ten minutes on the clock. This guy's <laughs> starting on my back, and he he has no chill. So it's like face cranks. Your teeth were in play, like everything. And then I get on his back. So they turn in like super explosive. I'm like, bro, this is gonna be the worst ten minutes like <laughs> I've ever experienced. Yeah, it was just a rough go. That was a rough it's, go. So, <laughs> Tim is a lot like that too. Yeah, yeah. So Tim, the second worst time Tim, Tim took my back. We were doing a photo shoot for uh, the Fuji, the protector. I think you had, I think you had the shorts guards, on there. Yeah, yeah. You know, rash guard and shorts. And when we do those photo shoots, we just put it on and then fight each other. Yeah. But it was during like an afternoon class. He took my back. And just he didn't submit me from my back, but he just kept like shooting cross faces across, and it's like, like we were friends before Smother, this happened. Yeah, yeah, Smother yeah. you and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I had for like two weeks, like if I it was citrus, I couldn't drink it because it got oh, burn my dude, mouth. Like right, yeah. everything yep. inside my mouth was just wrecked, and I was so like I was like I, again. Tim is the nicest guy, but as soon as you slap hands and then oh, bump, beast, yeah. yeah, he is gonna murder you. Yeah, and he he didn't submit me, but again though, just kept <laughs> just make you suffer for ten Speaking minutes. Yeah. You know. Coming back uh, Five. full circle, Five. Five. You, if you remember yeah, yeah. when we were at Matt Larson's, I remember one time it was you, uh, Jared, and I forgot the other guys that went. I remember this photo forever. Jared's shirt, you guys had sparked him, was blood all right yeah. down the shirt. So yeah. No, Tim, I couldn't drive home after that. <laughs> yeah, no, so Tim. Tim, don't don't hold grudges. <laughs> I, I, Tim would be like, hey, we're going to do some light sparring rounds. <laughs> Tim, I, 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 my eyes aren't tracking right now. You, you, this is a, this wasn't light, Tim. We have like, different definitions of light. Yeah, yeah. Like, like maybe this is light for what you and John Jones do, but like, <laughs> right? I, 
I'm not I, a professional fighter. Yeah, I, I do. I, I was at the time. I, I do army shit all day and then come here because I don't have friends. And now I have CTE. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. I can't drive home. None of these people are good enough friends where they'll pay, like drive me home. Now I got to have my pregnant wife come pick me up. I remember that, man. That yeah. Just the picture afterwards. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Jared was... Man, out of it himself. Yeah, yeah. So. they all had CTE. Yeah, yeah. All, uh, after that one, I think they all did, man. Mm -hmm. I'll never yeah. forget that picture though. They're all like looking at the camera, and Jared is just blood, just all the way down yeah. his shirt. He's. I remember those training sessions when we would have like I think it was like a Colton Smith. Yep, all those yep. dudes. But it was like a it would be like a Tuesday, mm -hmm. and it would we would do it at Matt Larson's combat, and, and it, it, Again, just a random ass Tuesday. Yeah. And you'd have like seven guys who, like Bubba. Yeah, Bubba Bush. Yeah. 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 Like seven guys who fought in the UFC yep. would just be on the mats. And you'd be like, I, like I'm like i just a normal ass <laughs> dude. I'm pretty good at wrestling and jujitsu. I'm not amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to f try to take Tim down off the cage. <laughs> and then I'm going to go straight to Andrew Craig. Yep. And then I'm going to go to Colton Smith. And then I'm going to go to Bubba. And then I'm going to go to fucking. Uh, so Bubba fought, fought in the UFC as well. That's so we're tracking. Like, yeah, he's a good wrestler. Fought in the UFC yeah, as well. And so. just like jacked. Yeah, like I, I. So we have that uh, like picture that people still reshare this like every year. There's one time to explain how crazy that Fort Hood Colleen area where I live is. Now I live a little bit further north, but uh, there's a picture: me, Pat, Tim, Andrew, Colton. Uh, Bubba Bush. Jeff Jer Jared. was Jeff Neal in that one. Jeff Neal wasn't in that one, but he would come. Yeah. Uh, and then like m probably fifty more guys, but of of them all, there's like twenty that are now black belts. Probably ten made the UFC of that group. It was just nuts. The, Jeff's still uh, fine. Jeff, Jeff just fought a couple fine. weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff's a man. Um, he's a really good friend. When I st when I was already fighting when he started fighting, so really really early on. And then now this is like another thing like. 100% he fucked me up today. Like, we got in a fight. 100%. Yeah. Um, but I remember one of his first days in the gym. He was super athletic and moved well. But as soon as he threw a punch, I was able to take him down. And I was like, oh, man. In my mind at that time, I wanted to be a fighter, too. I was like, oh, this guy's pretty athletic. Took him down. Now it's just a great memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That one time when, I when, I, when I start feeling down, I'm like, I took off Jeff. Yeah, I took yeah. off Jeff. Yeah. like, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. I could do it again. Only, only a decade. <laughs> So I want to kind of switch gears. So you have done, if there's a competition, yeah. you have pretty much done it. You've done EBI. You're like a double champion in that combat sports yeah, coverage combat thing. Yeah, combat sports coverage. Yeah. So how, like, I, I went and watched one of those. Yeah. But how is it competing those? Because I know you have the gi belt and the no gi yeah, belt. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. So you're right. I, I thankfully have done a lot of the things and that's been one of the recent ones so combat sports coverage he i had went to a couple events and he brings in he tries his hardest to bring in some ufc fighters most are smaller they're not like not way up the card yeah. but he tries his best to bring in some ufc fighters mix it in because of the rule set so the rule set actually favors some, someone like pat extremely because if you survive regulation over time is first one to a takedown first one to yeah. a takedown wins so if you have a guy like me and a guy like Pat, if he can hold me in a body lock, he's going to win though. I, there's no way I'm gonna beat him in the overtime. It's just not gonna happen. So it really favors him. So when I had learned this rule set, I was like, uh, like I'd seen a, a, one of our guys, Cundiff, you know Cundiff, uh, yeah. at the gym. So he had won his, uh, he had won the belt at Brown Belt, but he'd beat a guy that's in the UFC, uh, AJ something. He, he fought, they had a really good match. He took him down in overtime. Uh, and then he fought some other guy and took him down in overtime. He's a pretty, Good wrestler. I wouldn't say he's a great wrestler. Good wrestler, um, but he blends it well with his jujitsu. That's what he does. Do great. Uh, so I saw that and I was like, man, pretty cool. And then some of our women at the gym had had super fights on their card, and I was like, let's see. So the promoter. That, that, sorry to interrupt. That's up the twos. You guys have some assassin. Oh, like, dude. Your yeah. your lady class. I see. Like like uh, like they'll take the picture at the end, yep. and like they're so tough. They're so, so tough. A lot of them were here today. So. Uh, first time in our gym, and I, I do, I credit my wife and a, a lot more than this, something I've been able to do as a teacher, and this is the weirdest thing to have in my area, but uh, of our women in there, three are Nogi World Champions at the, uh, so all three oh of them won Nogi World titles at Blue Belt. Um, one is a four-time Pan uh, Nogi Gold Medalist. Uh, one uh, got weight, uh, she won her weight, and then at Pans did the absolute. She fought an ultra heavy. The lady was 200 plus pounds. 
beat her the first round, beat another heavier girl, beat another heavier girl. She lost enough. She was just so gassed. She's 120 pounds. Yeah. So oh she was just so gassed. And then um, one of my other ladies here, she, she was here today too. She killed it. So she actually is good in gi and no gi. Uh, Master Worlds last year, which uh, for mass, she's Master One. Uh, it's a huge bracket. I like for women even it's 60 70 people oh my god uh, so <laughs> she won the first match won the second match she beat the number one seed the pan Ch gi pan champion the third round and she commorted her and i was like you got this easy sailing comes to the semifinals. that's how she ends up with the bronze she's up the entire match final minute instead of just chilling she's top side half guard she throws her leg over to arm bar but the girl has half guard still comes up scores the points and i was oh, like oh no. boy here we go so she ends up losing via points yeah and i was like oh that like sucks. you could have had both the nogi and the gi like yeah. that would have been awesome <laughs> but we have this amazing amazing w women's squad at the gym we really do so um they've done super fights all they're all in that and one of the ladies she's won an adcc open uh they've done incredible like that's something we've been very lucky with at the academy like yeah. super great women Sorry uh, to sidetrack. No, no, no. But cu coming back to the CSC thing. So he asked me, uh, the promoter, uh, Tom is his name. He had said, hey, would you be interested in doing a match? And then he said, well, how about we do a Grand Prix? And I said, okay, who are the opponents who you're bringing in? So he'd got these other like Texas-based guys for the first Grand Prix idea that I've done stuff before. So Bobby Alexander is an old name. Uh, he's my size. He fought MMA when I was fighting MMA, and uh, at, he had won a Nogi World title at Blue Belt forever ago, and he's won Fight to Win at Brown Belt. He had won the Gi title, I think, on – he'd won it once and defended it two or three times. So he's a pretty established guy. I had leg locked him before at a tournament, and he had he's a black belt now, but I had a feeling I could get into his legs pretty easy. That was my, my first opponent. I heel hooked him. The finals was scary for me. So the guy's name's Jason Solis. Uh, he runs the academy in Houston. He's a pretty good competitor in Texas, scrappy guy. He'd actually beaten me uh, when I was a purple belt. He knee barred me super hard. So I was nervous going into that match. I was like, oh, bro, like this is like, let's see how much better I've gotten over, <laughs> yeah. over the years. Cause I was like, last time did not end well for me. Uh, and then I triangled him in 30 seconds. I was like, all right, like that's it. <laughs> and now he's a champion uh, in some other promotion. So uh, it was at, like pretty good competition for the Texas scene. Uh, it, I felt like the first one. Uh, the second one, he had. Was the first one gi or no gi? First one was no gi. So no that, gi, okay. that's what I love to do. Yeah. Second one, he had said they don't have exciting gi matches. Uh, like they haven't introduced that yet. Would I be interested? Um, so there, there was a, a guy that. I was supposed to fight at the submission hunter that we did in Colleen. We yeah, yeah, in, yeah. And he didn't even tell me he pulled out. What actually had happened, they made the poster, and then I couldn't. I didn't even have time to save my poster. got taken down. I was like, that was really weird. Like, did they delete my poster? Like, what happened? Uh, and then he was like, oh, that guy pulled out when he saw the poster. I was like, oh, what? what? And then so they go through all these opponents. Tra and, and so we'll Travis <laughs> has the same problem with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, we'll, we'll get an opponent. Yep. And then their opponent will like look us up and they'll be like, hey, I uh, hurt my wrist. <laughs> Can't yeah. make it that day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. What killed me about it, though, is that he he didn't do this match because he said he was hurt and he signed up for like a Naga a week later. Yeah. I was like, bro, come on, man. Yeah. But so what, uh, one of the one of the funny things, though, is it's real. It's really hard for me to get matches against people around my size. Yeah. So then I, I end up going against these young athletes fucking assassins well, like yeah. michael yeah well that's so that's what ended up happening with uh michael at submission hunter he kept being like i want to fight a black belt i want to fight a black belt and i had told him i was like the only black belt that's going to be willing to fight you is going to be someone like pat because <laughs> all these other guys are so protective of whatever yeah. he'll go out there and scrap with you and then i had told him though i was like dude you're giving up all the weight your game is not good against his game and i was like i can tell you what he's going to do i don't know if you're gonna be able to stop it and so it was kind of it was kind of this thing of like uh, he's gonna body lock you and he's probably gonna try to pass your guard and then i was like that's what he does it's what he likes to do and yes. i was like can you weather the storm or not that's the question and so he was like oh like he did it and then i was like well man i was like next time you probably want to get a guy your weight closer, <laughs> closer, closer to uh, your experience level yeah. but uh he, he, I, I, Credit to him. Yeah. Is he, I think, because he started, he traded SAS. He did. Now he trains with you guys. 
he knew that like i think he was like he's like i kind of like felt like he was peaking yeah he was like i'll make the drive i'm gonna go train with travis because yep. like his game is very close to your it is game. we have a similar style at jujitsu yeah. he's a he's a li- we're the same height he's a little bit bigger he's built different he's a little bit softer yeah. but he's probably 15 20 pounds bigger and yeah. um he has great great technique he for him and you see guys like this all the time his issue is not when he trains he's actually like amazing amazing role when he competes he's one speed so he never goes from zero up to a hundred yeah he goes from zero up to 20 and then yep. that's his competition and so we're trying to work through that now i'm like dude you have all the techniques how are we going to get you to throttle up you can't go yep. at this turtle pace the whole match and hope and hope you have success you know so. I, 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 t- I said something to him today yeah and i was like hey can you act like you're excited to be here yeah because he's, <laughs> he's, he's just like <laughs> That's it, but I bet I bet he loved it. It's just yeah. like that's just uh, yeah, every that's time that's he, every time he's come here though, and when the moves are going, I don't know if he's like just breaking them down in his head, but he's yeah. always like, <laughs> <laughs> like the guy from the Hangover. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so you you got your you're doing the gi one. So now. yeah, yeah. So and then he tells me, hey, this is this is the scenario. This is who we have, um, and then. I, I had felt pretty confident going in the match. One thing I wanted to do in the gi is try, I, I, I like to tr- always try something different. So um, I went out there and I shot, this is probably the war, ended up being the worst part of the match. I shot in, I got a great single and I picked him up. It was like a, a high crotch and I pick him up in the air for the kid. I have to coach at these events too. For the kids, it was very well noted. No slams, no slams. It was on the intercom, no slams. So in my mind, I'm like, well, shit, there's no rule book like out here. So it must be no slam because we're talking like mats on cement. So yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. No and slam. the mat space is it real oh, big? No, no. It's, it's so small. It's the equivalent, man. This desk pretty much like this desk on like the whole room full yeah. right here. So it's a very tiny mat space. Yeah. So I pick the guy up um, and I'm like, man, have him in the air. But I'm like, no slams. What am I going to do with them now? Because it's like if you slam them, it's, it's maybe a DQ. And I was like, that'd be one way he could win. Uh, so he, as I'm holding him up, he puts me in this guillotine and of it, course he yeah, does. Yeah. 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 Of the, course he the, does. The, the, the guillotine wasn't tight. Like I wasn't choking at all, but he was cranking the crap out of my neck. And then I shake him off and pass his guard. And I, I end up with this cross collar choke, but I was like, man, uh, I had to like, this is my own ego, but I had to, at the end of the match be like, Hey man, that guillotine wasn't tight. Like, just so you know, just so you know, I wasn't choking. Like, I don't want you to think I was panicked. I was like, it was hurting my neck, but uh, it was not choking me. I did tell him back. I was just like, I, I don't, I don't know what it was. And the moment I was being competitive, and I was like, I hope he doesn't think like I was like, I could have slammed you, bro. So yeah. I was like, you know. so, so, so that story right there has happened to me so many times. Yeah, yeah. Where I would get someone in like a lift. Yeah. And I'd be like, what now? Yeah, what well, now? We, I, I, I'm not going to slam this guy, especially when you're training. Yeah. And so you're like, I'm going to let him down gently. And they grab your neck yeah. and you're like, bro, I could have just ended. It's yeah, like, yeah. It, it's like when you're sparring and someone throws that, you throw a head kick. Yeah. And, but you pull it at the last minute and they like grab it and then sweep your leg and they act like they did something. No, I could have knocked you unconscious. Yeah, yeah. That happens so much, man, in sparring. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's no joke. Yeah. So, See, Patrick, um, she picks people up like on a daily basis yeah. here and oh, spins them around in circles. So you don't, yeah. you don't wrestle with this guy. That's the, you can't yeah, yeah. wrestle with this yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, do oh, I only do that to tiny women, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He does that. Yeah. Watch out, Martha. Watch out over there. Uh, so. Yeah, we have this... So, we have this. Uh, we have this lady named Danielle. Yeah, she, uh, Asian lady. She's pregnant. Yeah, and um, she like showed up and she was like, "Yeah, I'm pregnant." I was like, "Congratulations!" And then we started rolling, and I body locked past her. And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, body locks for two. And yeah. she, was like, yeah. she was like, "I hate you." And Rob was. I looked at her husband. Rob was like, "Hey, I'm just trying to toughen these kids up, man." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, second. So that was the first. It was four man bracket. So no, this was just a, a one man. Yeah. So now it's this thing where it's like um, I had got offered. So I got offered a really great a potential match. It's just I like to do things where they line up well. So my goal coming into this year was I didn't do it last year. I did the ADCC Open. I did these kind of things. And I did a few smaller tournaments, but I didn't do a lot of the IBJJF because you have to focus on the rules or make yep. your game good for their rules. So. This year, I was like, I'm going to refocus on those. But I got offered, uh, they offered me to fight Carlos Diego, but it was going to be grappling in a cage. And I did submission underground, the one yep. Chelsana was running. And I was like, man. You did grappling. really good in that, too. Yeah, I did really good in that. Mm-hmm. But the grappling in the cage is a whole nother 
thing, and Car- Carlos very experienced in the cage. Like, yeah. man, uh, he's a, another guy that fought in the UFC, still fights in the UFC. I think he's still signed. But um, it was, I was like, man, I don't want to change what I'm doing so much to take away from what I set my goal to yep. be. You know what I mean? So, um, but he, they've reached out to me, and there've been some good opponents, uh, some to travel with that are like bigger name guys. I'd, I'd be up to do it again, or even he had other Grand Prix walk up. The uh, last one we had a team duel as well. Uh, so those our, are the funnest. Though, oh, dude, it, it was, it got intense. Not so much with our team. So um, we had Michael Cundiff and uh, Michael Cundiff and uh, Hunter. All right, we have a young guy named Hunter. He's athletic, uh, pretty tough. So we had our three guys. First round, they blast through the guys. They beat them pretty easily. Second round, uh, they fought. There was a team that was kind of all maj podge together, um, but it was two Brazilian guys and a. And a bigger white dude that reed reed shelger the wrestler mm-hmm. um so it's those three guys and their team was pretty well designed for the rule set so they they end up beating our guys and they get to the finals well the finals the the other team they're supposed to face was supposed to be new wave uh they had abraham uh reese lafleur the smaller guy and then they had um davis Assar. <sighs> uh but davis because so coming back to these like rules being a little bit like oh man this could be rough he got double legged on the cement and hurt his rib. So they only had two guys to enter the finals. So Abraham destroys Reed, right? As as predicted, yeah. he's a lot younger, uh, a lot stronger. Um, Reese has to go against one of their like heavyweight guys. It's a great match. It went to overtime. They fought hard for a takedown. Reese gets taken down. So now it's one to one. But they don't have a third guy. The Brazilian guys go nuts. Like, they can't send no one out. So we get in this huge, we're staying there watching. Uh, Abraham had actually asked me if I would corner him for the match. So there, there's this huge debate. They're going back and forth. This old Brazilian guy comes out. He starts arguing. It's like, now it's a debacle. And the guy, the, the coordinator, Tom, he's kind of lost. Like, what should I do? What should I do? I was like, Tommy, I, I told him, I was like, bro, it's your promoter. Make a decision. I was like, either you let someone else go or you don't. But you got to decide. Like, you can't let these people pressure you. So it, they end up agreeing to terms that the last heavy guy can fight Reese again, the really tiny guy. Yeah. And then he ends up getting armbarred, and it was nuts afterwards, man. But that was the most intense team duel. I wish our team had been in the final, but uh, still for that for that show, and it was a uh, it turned to a shit show, really. But it was intense. It was intense, man. Yeah, those are uh, always those, the funnest. And yeah. if you don't have rules that are set up like well defined, like these are your three dudes, and you get one substitute. Yep, that's how it should have been. Yeah, right. So then you don't have to worry about that. But if the rules aren't like defined, and yeah. you, like p- then people are gonna. Stuff like that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, Colton mm-hmm. Smith called me and was like, hey, there's this five on five deal. Do you want to come do it? And it was DC. So he yeah. flew me out. And we like uh, Chris Y'all Roscoe. Wreck that team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris <laughs> Roscoe competed in it too. Yeah. And I like, I like, we were missing a guy. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if I can get Mike out here. Yeah. But it was like, the, the, we found out the day before that this dude wasn't going to be able to do it. So we just had one of Colton's purple belts. But I was like, man, like, if we can get Mike on this team, like yeah, you'd no, be loaded, man. Yeah, yeah, nobody loaded. be able to beat because we had oh, already though with you and Colton, that's going to be hard. To... Yeah, well, and <laughs> there's a guy named uh, Mike Dawson who did it. Yeah, and he plays kind of a he's built like you. Yeah, um, and he has a school in uh, like Baltimore, and he like he ran through the Marines. Like uh, we sent uh, one of our one of the other black belts went out, and he had a double knockout in the first round. Yeah, and then that Mike Dawson dude submitted three people. And then he went, got a double knockout. Yeah. And then they had one guy left. We had me, Colton, and a purple belt <laughs> against their heavyweight. And Colton was like, oh, well, hey, let's let the purple belt go. Yeah. <laughs> and then the purple belt started walking out, and Colton was like, psych. <laughs> <laughs> and then went out there and guillotine choked the dude in like 30 seconds. When, when I had <laughs> seen the lineup, man, it was almost like the army branch was overloaded with it was like yeah. uh man when team usa does basketball <laughs> yeah. like, man, some of these other countries might do all right they may score a couple of points they ain't winning yeah, you know, so, that was the vibe I, man when i saw that poster yeah so this so this never happens i feel good about myself <laughs> thank you travis for coming on the podcast we have to have this more often because normally again these guys just shit on me for an hour <laughs> so, it's nice so you so what so you're gonna constantly like, do a little more ibjjf i, I am i i Already last year, we had talked about this. So in 2019, uh, that was my, I had not done any events uh, when I turned Master One. I had done adult events, and then I had kind of taken a year um, kind of like doing various things. I think that's the first year I had done the EBI. I was doing this when the super fights, super fights were a little bit bigger when they first started because yeah. we, were, we were on some of those cards and actually getting money, like bigger yeah. money to do this like we were. And now all these great guys are here, and it's kind of like, 
all right, well, we're the local guys yeah. now. You know what I mean? Al- so. Also, me and Travis used to be like Central Texas Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, then fucking New Wave came. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Ruined it, ruined it. And then B-Team game th- it came. Was, it was thanks. like any card in Austin, San Antonio, uh, Colleen, Wherever it was, it'd yeah. be like, like Eric told me one time for submission hunter. He was like, well, "If you and Pat aren't on it, I'm not doing it." Yeah, it was, like, it was it. And then we were always the main event, co-main event, prestigious in the card, selling tickets, making money. And then now uh, these guys have kind of put us where it's like, "All right, well now you guys are still on the main card, but you're down here." <laughs> yeah, because you guys, here. you guys are old as shit. Yeah, now. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, I, when I turned uh, my second year of being master one, I made a really good run. Um, I had not done much at the IBJJF prior to that. I had done some at adult, but uh, I made a good run that year. I had Austin Open double gold, uh, weight and absolute, and then Dallas Open, I won weight. I got second absolute, but the guy I lost to, I, I lost four to two. Uh, he was at the time the number one ranked master one overall in Nogi. He is one of the referees. He did it all the time. Yeah. Uh, and so going in after that, I did Nogi Pans. Um, so I made it to the finals. I had the guy locked in a Dars and I went to adjust it. He escaped. His hand was up to tap. I adjusted. He ends up escaping and then he, he wins. And I was like, dude, my first try, I got second place at Nogi Pans. Like, I feel very good about it. I go to Nogi Worlds. First, first match, triangle with the guy in 30 seconds. Second match, thought I had the guy beat. I had him in a lockdown and he tries to so i have him in a lockdown uh you guys know you, you train as well yeah yeah okay all right, all right. so I had him he's a, a he's a purple belt blue belt you know not purple belt. Blue belt. <laughs> so i had him in a lockdown with his leg up here the electric chair he, yeah mm-hmm. electric chair but he does some crazy explosive move where he like lifts his leg and he twists his knee pops right it makes us oh. loud pop. but they had told me that I had created a twisting leg lock with how my legs were extending his, so I got disqualified. His knee had popped so loud you could hear it on flow. It's boom, it like explodes. Oh. And I was like, he kind of did it to himself. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was, was holding like, his leg. So he yeah, his own, yeah. His own so body. they DQ me, and then I was kind of like, whatever. So um, for those that don't know, after that I took a little bit of a break from IBJJF. My wife, uh, she's sitting in the the room with us here. She had started competing in IBJJF. So her second tournament at Blue Belt, it was at Austin. Um, she's going in the gi, and I had we had made a deal. I said, if you win your division, you don't have to do the absolute. But if you lose, just go get the experience. So we look at the absolute, and the girl is probably 30 pounds on her, her first opponent. They go out there. My wife's actually doing incredible, like be- beating her, doing really well. Towards the end of the match, though, they get in a scramble. The other girl stands up. We're talking 45 seconds left in the match, and she's up. The other girl's frustrated visibly, so she grabs my wife's like collar sleeve and just jumps guard right into her knee. Instantly torn ACL, oh. MCL, meniscus, and oh so we you just, collected that, the whole set. Yeah, 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 she, yeah. she, she, she got more. them all, uh, and then it just so it ongoing like without over elaborating, but. The first MCL didn't take, so it had to do a second MCL replacement. Uh, it's just ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. And I didn't really uh, – some some rules I don't like about IBJJF, and uh, not to make this like a, an anti-IBJJF, I'm doing the – I already, yeah. already, already did that. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, I, I did a whole podcast the, just railing on the, IBJJF. The, sing, the single dumbest rule, like when the guard jump's fine, right? Like at the at the end of the day, things happen. I, I, I don't like the movement. John doesn't do it at New Wave or Roka. Yeah. You jump guard. You're out. Like, it's not going to happen. Same thing at B-Team. It's one of those things. But uh, now for the kids, it says on their illegal techniques, you can't jump guard. Well, it's cool. So we have a kid competing at the most recent event. The other kid jumps guard, right? All right. The referee sets some starting. I was like, all right. It's a kid. Makes sense. Kid immediately jumps guard again. Leaves his feet. Jumps on. This one almost extends my kid's knee. And then the referee stands him back up. And I'm shouting, that should be a DQ. That should be a DQ. My kid ends up losing on points, like four to two in the match. So I go to the head ref and I say, hey, man, I thought jumping guard was illegal. He's like, it is, but kids get six penalties. And I was like, well, what, what if when he jumped guard, he blew out my kid's knee? He'd be like, the guy jumping would win the match. As I said, I said, so we should train our kids to just blow out the other kid's knee. And then he had to think for a second. He was like, well, no. And I was like, but you're saying that would win the match. And he said, well, yeah. I was the like, rules do you, make do the fight. I was like, yeah, the rules not, make the fight. Right? This is stupid. Yeah. And then he agreed it was stupid. So I do the rules meeting. I, I pass the rules course. This was a few months ago. And I ask in the group chat, I, I explain the same scenario. And a guy said, unfortunately, yeah, that's the rule. So if you're jumping guard, it's illegal. But if you break the other kid's leg, you still win the match. So I was like, how stupid can the rules be? Right? Yeah. It's like com- common sense. Contradictory rules. Uh, right, right, exactly. So it's 
I mean, man, that that in itself. But um, getting back to it, I, I just did Austin Open. Uh, now I'm uh, medium heavy again. I've been walking about 185, 186. Are you still so. Masters 1 or are you Masters 2? I'm two? Masters 2 now. Yeah, We I just are turned. both Masters 2. Yeah, yeah, I just turned Masters 2. All three of us. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, there yet. Yeah. I won in the, my weight class. I, I defeated the guy pretty easy. I rear naked choked him then did the absolute. Uh, uh, no gear gi. No gi, no gi, yeah. Um, I've done a few uh, at Master 1 in the gi. I would like to hop back out there in the gi. It's just... Uh, trying to stay focused, man, and win these, yeah. win, win some of these majors. Um, yeah, but, I'm going to, I'm going to um, Pans. Yeah, that, I, I, I plan to try to do them all, man. I, I'm going to do Dallas and next weekend. Uh, it's my birthday, uh, March 9th, but I'm going to do Dallas next nice. weekend for happy like, early birthday. Thank you, happy thank early you. birthday. Yeah. And then uh, I just want to compete. So I told her, I told my Martha, my wife, I was like, I'm going to do weight. And absolutely, like, whoever come worst case scenario gets smashed. But I'm learning like what works for my game and what doesn't. Yeah. So uh, I had success at Austin. Um, I triangled the guy in the absolute. Uh, this time around, there's more should be more opponents. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But that's my goal this year is to get some of these big titles like that. Nogi pans get getting the silver and not the gold when I could have got the gold. Like that eats away at me. I, at Worlds, the match I got disqualified, if I had won that, I'd be on the podium at Nogi Worlds. So who knows what happens at that point? You just got to win two more matches. So yeah. it's uh, it's like, man, just having that taste. But um, that's my focus this year. And then the last couple of years, I got to do the Submission Underground, which great experience. Got to do that. The, the EBIs, all these different formats. And it's just, uh, just man, it's so hard, though training for different formats yeah. i'll say 100 you know? so, so uh, one of the awesome things too is you got jimmy altman oh yeah yeah he moved he moved he yeah and i saw yeah, that but yeah. you got him in submission underground yeah yeah i did and and that's like for a uh, jimmy is one of those dudes where he doesn't have a name yeah because he doesn't compete a lot but he's so good oh he's so good man yeah he, uh, pat you were a uh, big influential he'll listen to this yeah. uh, i know you were like Prior to him coming here, you're the most influenced uh, instructor that he always spoke so highly of. And then he moved all around, as yeah. you saw, and had all this stuff happen. But um, he's so he he just his jujitsu is he's so good, man. Yep. He and just he has to believe in himself. That's and he, it, one hundred percent. And he took jujitsu from everybody. He did. Like so, he's got good wrestling. Yeah. But also, if he touches your legs, you're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, oh man, he uh, we when we went out there for what's cool about Submission Underground is that. You can you do get to meet Chael, but he's like Tim was today with me here. It's in that capacity where yeah. he's doing so much crap, like production. He's yeah. doing this podcast, shooting these videos. You get to meet him, but you don't get to hang out with him, yeah. right? So it's all these other people. But uh, when we did it, always, always, like we just talked about, people will wait. Even on big shows like that, they're going to be like, I can't come today. I got sick. I yeah. got this or that. At the time when I was doing it, the popular thing for a guy, whether it's true or not, where to back out was to be like, I think I have COVID. And then the <laughs> people at that time really couldn't be a joke. We're like, oh, no, no, we can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're like, oh, all right, all right. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to yeah. touch it. So uh, I had told Jimmy, I was like, pack your shit, man. I was like, just in case. I was like, if there's an opening, we're going to get you in. And I was like, every time that I've done this, there's been an opening. I was like, be shocked if there wasn't. So one opening pops up, and the guy actually refused to fight fight Jimmy. Uh, it was a 10th Planet guy. He refused to do it for whatever reason. And then another opening popped up with another black belt. I was like, let's do it, man. And he was like, oh. And he was like, so excited. That was that was really cool. And yeah. then that was two um, dating back to like four former students uh, that I've had. Um, I've gotten the chance to give others that opportunity. So like uh, J Justin Rennick with him, yep. uh, I got him on the EBI combat jiu-jitsu. So I had to pull out with a torn meniscus. I messaged him, Eddie Bravo, and was like, hey, man, you mind giving this guy a chance? So I got to get him on to that, right? And so that was like, oh, there's been multiple students that I've gotten Which is, big opportunities you, to. You, you know? don't see that a lot of coaches doing that. Right. Right, which is awesome that you do do it because – you're given these like I, I have an analogy of like when you're an instructor, like you're teaching not don't take this the wrong way, but you're teaching snakes yeah, and not really teaching snakes. But you're like a snake charmer as in like, hey, like I'm teaching this guy how to be an assassin and eventually he's going to bite me, but not about like he's going to submit me. It's going to happen. And the fact that like you're giving these dudes who are all, like your students, they play your game. They're very good, but you're giving them opportunities. I try my best. Yeah, man. I truly do. It's uh, it was kind of the same boat. Um, even today, if you look around, so 
Of the guys up front, there's several guys I promoted at Black Belt. As you know, Chris is very talented. Yep. Um, now he lives in the area. He gets to teach. He does um, at George 10th Planet Georgetown. Uh, I think he does the Soul Fighters in yep. Leander. He's kind of been able, uh, like something I'm grateful for and on the back end is like, man, not only have I helped people be good on the mats, now they're good instructors and they're able to influence people even if no matter what like why why they left the gym and you know most of like me and chris we had a great talk today i actually hadn't seen him in a couple months we had a great talk today great bonding it was like we hadn't skipped a beat you know um but that was great to see him and then even sal like uh i promoted sal to black belt training now he's running sas you know so it's uh guys that come from my gym are usually able to go on and be very successful where they're they're at you know and it's one of the cool things again you you have like you came up in that central Texas area, and really, if you think about it, there's not too many dudes that are still there They're that, not. We, that not. we came up with. Mm-mm. And now all the guys, like even thinking about it now, all the guys that are like running schools there, yeah, uh, except for Twin Wolves, yeah, all of them, they have some kind of lineage with Travis, yeah, right. Yeah, like, it's... and that's that's got to feel really good. I actually. I've never promoted someone to black belt. Yeah. And you have all these guys. Like, I promoted Phil the brown belt, but yeah. I've never promoted someone to black belt. And now you have all these guys that you've trained under you and kind of help guide them down the path of what they're doing now. And it's spreading the sport of jujitsu so much. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a lifestyle. It's just not a sport. But, like, you're spreading that so much with all those guys that, like, we had in here today. Yeah. Which is amazing. Like, I mean, Jeffro. It was time for Jeffro. Oh, 100%, black belt. man. He's yeah. training longer than us. Yeah. He also is built like a brick. Oh, yeah, yeah. He looks like a fucking one of those giant pit bulls. <laughs> like, Jeff, slow down, bud. All right. Uh, what, what's down. funny is that, uh, I mean, man, he moves so well. He's so strong, as you know, and does all this stuff. But I have noticed with as he's gotten older, he's more walking like Robocop a little bit yeah. now until he loosens up. But, man, yeah. he's like, Jeff Rose, like a yeah. beast. Also, his arms are the size of my thighs. Yeah. And he is a sweetheart. Yeah. The nicest guy. That's also, too, name a guy that was, like, one of your black belts that you promoted that isn't a sweetheart. Chris yep. Roscoe, sweetheart. Yep. Uh, Sal, sweetheart. Yep. Jeff, sweetheart. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. Yeah, they, they man, and all, all the guys, that's uh, been a big thing at the gym. It's like, so soon, like, coming coming up, like, people to come to get a black belt. It's like, Michael will probably be there soon. Michael has trained a really long time. He's doing really good. Uh, I just want to see most of the guys I promoted at this point. It's if you're a non-competitor, you're graded different. I think it's yeah. like um, like man, a- Adrian, great guys, trained forever, and now it, his daughter's doing it yeah, too. Yeah, now like, his daughter's doing it too. Adrian, Adrian doesn't view himself as a competitor, and I'm like, man, okay, like you're a great guy to have in the gym. You know these techniques. You're going out there. A guy like Michael, on the other hand, he has all the technique and skill, but you want to be a competitor. Like yeah. I got to see you earn it out there as well. You know what yeah. I mean? So. What, 100 percent. it's awesome that you look at it like that too because like if you think about like when we came up there's so many guys who didn't compete that right. were just like savages yeah. adrian a great example yeah yeah like savage like never competed in a tournament yeah but he's he's really good he's yeah. got good basic fundamental jiu-jitsu and the fact that like you recognize that and hold them to yeah. a different like it's cool, right? And also, those sometimes you get those like guys who are competitors, yeah. and then they go back and they're like, "Hey, like I told my dudes the other day, I was like, hey, like if I go to Pans and I win a Pan title, yeah, it's a little bit of me, but it's more you guys. Agreed. Because Agreed. if you guys weren't here right now, yeah. there's I wouldn't be able to train with anybody, and right. I wouldn't be as good as I am. Right. Like you guys like attacking me, like. I know that a lot of black belts say don't ask, like you have, don't ask yeah, me. Yeah. I have to ask you. No, I tell them I was like, come get it. Same man, and I, I think that comes from where we started. It's like that, you know. Yeah. What I, you know what I mean. You didn't have to. Jared didn't get offended. He just tried to rip your face. <laughs> he off. did. He did try to kill you, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was uh, same way with me, man. So I, I love training. I love training hard, and even coming into today, it's kind. Of, I was like, oh boy, when you had told me we walked through, and you were like, Tim's here today. Thankfully, we didn't roll because I was like <laughs> yesterday. Uh, started the day lifting. I was like, I'm going to take the whole day off so tomorrow goes as easy as possible. Then at uh, 11 o'clock, all the fighters from Strikings came over. And MMA fighters roll different than jiu-jitsu. It's like, yeah, because oh. they want to hit you. Right. It's like this, fir- <laughs> it's this firmer style, even though the grappling is not as great. It's still this hard style. Of, like You may catch a forearm to the face or the head or the neck, and you just go, right? So I roll hard at 11. I was like, all right, for sure I'm taking a night class off. 
And then I have our young guys in there. Guy Blair, you mentioned, wanted yeah. to roll, all these other guys. So I rolled hard last night. I told Martha, I was like, shit, tomorrow's going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also so. today, we finished the class at 1 o'clock. And Travis rolled with everyone who asked him to roll. There was only two people on the mat. Everyone else was off eating tacos. They ate all the tacos. Travis <laughs> didn't get any tacos. We had to go get them from a restaurant because Travis literally was the last. Him and one other guy were the last two dudes on the mat. Yep. Travis didn't have the mark underneath his eye when he got no, here today. No, yeah, 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 that happened. I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah that happened sure. today. And I was like, Travis, you don't have to do that. You don't have to roll with that guy. Like, let's go get food. And you're like, no, no. I'm going to roll with I was like, I'm, hey. go I'm going to get fucking tacos, bro. Yeah, no, nah, man. I, I, every, every chance I get to do something cool like this, uh, so, uh, for me personally, as I've gotten older, it's like, man, if I went to someone's seminar, I would hope they take the time to roll with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so uh, I, I, today, today is different. It's a class, and it was fr free for everybody. But even then, I'm like, man, it's, it's, you, had, you had said this. Some of these guys drove hours. So... Who, who am Four I? Four and a half hours. Yeah. Who, who am I? Who oh, am they, I to tell them? From Beaumont, huh? Yeah. 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 Who, who am I to tell them no? Like, I, you know what I mean? There's, there's never going to be a time unless I'm injured where I'm going to be like, no. Like, your, your time's worthless to me. I, I think their time's valuable, and if, if they came all the way to see me and roll with me, I owe it to them to roll with them yeah. unless there's some injury. So even if I'm exhausted and it's like, oh man, like this, so I just sweated all over them the whole roll and I laid there. At least they got the experience. So and even in my classes, I, I always think about this and sometimes I feel it and I do have scheduled days off now, but I'm like, man, you, you pay for a membership here. Uh, that's hard earned money, no matter how much you're paying. Uh, that's hard earned money for your family or you that they're paying for. So if you want to roll, I'm, I'm here for it, yeah. you know, unless it's extreme circumstance. So. so speaking of those people who drove from four hours away, I hope that they have defense wipes to wipe themselves off after rolling at this. There's about 90 people here today. It's crazy. And then when they get home, they use some of this defense soap so that they don't get any mat born illnesses. Mm. So go out there and get you guys some defense soap or defense wipes. If you use SDR 1.5. Uh, it'll get you 15% off. Actually, Travis, and uh, use some defense wipes after this. That was actually yeah. really pleasant. I feel clean. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, I, I really appreciate Travis coming today. I think we just did an hour and 15 minutes. Great. Yeah. Went by super fast. Uh, Martha, thank you for allowing us to borrow your husband for a little while. <laughs> um, it was awesome. Great techniques. I like to do Darces. You showed Darce of that. I like to do Darces, but the little intricacies that you showed today, like I'm going to put in my game and I'm definitely going to be using. Yeah, and I man. really appreciate that. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for allowing Heroes Jiu Jitsu to be at your school. Oh, dude, that's uh, that was a no brainer, man. Mm -hmm. the, what you guys are doing with the Heroes is like when Jeff Rowe asked, I was yeah. like, bro, Jeff Rowe respects you so much. Like, yeah. uh, he's such a great guy. Uh, but when he said that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. And thank you, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, no, of course. It was amazing. Um, thank you, Nick, all the for running the soundboard and being a big old jerk, and uh, Zach for wearing the stupid headphones because somebody forgot them at home. Not not anyone here, but some. If you're wondering why he looks like a, he's about to answer someone's call when they bitch about their uh, AC bill. It's because of uh, somebody forgot. To be uh, fair, that is Zach's job to answer the phone and listen actually to true. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you're right, 100. I don't use a headset though, yeah. <laughs> ironically. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, thank you for coming, Travis. Thank you, and, thank uh, you so thank much. You guys, it was man. awesome. 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 Yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you. We will see you guys next time on the uh, Fighter Says Podcast. Like, share, and uh, subscribe. What, hold on, one second, Travis. Where can we find you? Um, mm -hmm. at Travis Moore BJJ, uh, and then we also have a uh, Instagram Legends BJJ Temple. If you liked what you saw today, shameless plug, uh, I do have an instructional on BJJ <laughs> Fanatics, though. Welcome to the dark side. Check that out if you want to nice. grab more. Right there's always 50% off codes out there. So, yeah. yeah. So check, Yeah, check it out because I have it, and it's really good. Yeah. So thank you all for coming. And again, Travis, thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bye.